Guys, welcome to another episode of The Candy Show. I'm your host, Candy. We have another special guest in the house today. I have not really sat down and talked to this young lady uh, since, woof, we'll, we'll get into it. But guys, I want, you to, <laughs> I want you to welcome Indianapolis' own musical artist. She's a singer. She's a songwriter. She's a musician. Guys, I want you to welcome Miss Marielle Sellers. Hi, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for stopping in. Oh, wow. Let's go ahead and take it back. Let's go ahead and take it back. You ready? <laughs> All right, let's take it back. <laughs> All right, so I first knew you. I first seen you and your sister. Wow, 2008. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Little girls, little girls, you guys were performing and your father said, hey, you know, my girls are, are the best. I need you to come and watch them. So I had a chance to come and watch you guys. And I don't know if you remember this or not. It was at a spot called the Center Stage Cafe. Oh. You guys broke it out. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I got to have them on the show. <laughs> Yeah, that was so long ago. Those good memories there. Yes, yes. So with your dad, you know, we, we, we got you guys on our, you were, first of all, you were on our first Candy Productions here in Fashion Show. And then not only were you the first guest on the show, but you were our, like our first scheduled guest. So I was just so thankful that when I noticed you guys and as soon as you guys opened up, and you started singing. I was like, that's it. You guys are going to be, you, you you know, you're going to be something. Okay. You're going to go something. Yeah. I was like, oh, my gosh. So you remember that? I do. That was, oh, that was when my hair was like this big. And I was about 15 inches shorter. <laughs> <laughs> Still about 15 inches short. But yeah. <laughs> Did you like the video that I posted? <laughs> Very nostalgic. You know, that was also back then when we were uh first starting out. So again, I have to thank your father and we want to definitely say rest in heaven. Yes. I I did not know he passed away until so a few years, you know, back. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know that. But your father was so instrumental in everything that you and your sister was doing when it comes to the music. So tell us a little bit about that. So um, when me and my sister were really young, actually, it's a funny story because I don't really get to tell it very often, or at least tell it the way that it actually happened. So when I was about nine years old, my dad woke me up at like 2 a.m. He was like, all right, get out of bed. Come on, put your shoes on. I was like, why? It's so early. What do you want? And he brought me out to the garage and he had this pocket rocket all set up and ready for me. So I was, so I was like going to start racing like motorcycles. And I was so excited. I was so happy. And my eyes lit up like it was Christmas. It was great. So that that same morning I got to get out on my motorcycle and ride up and down our street and it was really quiet. So there was no cars, but then there was a car coming. So I pulled over to the side and I kept kind of rolling. He got so mad at me. He said, don't roll when there's cars coming, just stop. And I'm like, okay. Anyway, so I raced rockets for about a year and a half and then I crashed really bad. Um, I fell into a ditch. My brake handle broke off into my hand. My helmet went flying. I scratched up my face really, really bad. Um, and that's the same day I found out that I really couldn't see. So <laughs> my mom, she, uh, she found out, obviously she found out because we had a show that night for our church and I, and I look a hot mess and she's just like, no, no, you're done. She's done. She's good at singing. Make her do that. So I really have to give like credit to my mom for uh, saying, hey, she's good at singing. Make her sing. She doesn't need to raise. So my dad sold my bike and he ended up getting us music equipment. So microphones, a guitar, and then was just like, hey, take this, go learn it, 
sit down. You're not leaving this room until you've learned a song. So I was like, all right, cool. And that's kind of how it started with the whole music thing. So. And your sister, what's her name? Zena. Zena. And you guys were in a group called, again? Majestic to Praise. You know, that was, like I said, when I first heard you guys blow, I told your father, I was like, yes, you know, you would be perfect. Because the Candy mm -hmm. Show, we always, you know, we incorporated local acts when we were doing our fashion shows and any events that we did. And it was just like, it was a no brainer to put you all on there. So that was in 2008. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we life went on mm -hmm. and I no longer knew what was going on with Marielle. Now, next thing I know, I'm looking American Idol. A little bit before we get to American Idol, what happened between those ages up until then? Were you guys still doing music? Or, or, did you learn any more instruments? Tell us a little bit about how that part came. So, uh, so after, after we started the whole music scene and got our band together and everything, um, as a lot of people know, and as you know, some people might just be finding out, uh, my dad passed away uh, in 2009. Uh, and so that took a really big you know, toll on my life. Um, and after that, a lot, our band just kind of drifted apart. A lot of people stayed in music. Um, I did, my sister did not. Uh, she does it every now and then, but she it's not her it's not her full time uh full time gig like like I do. Uh so anyway, I started learning uh guitar, ukulele, piano, uh bass and drums. I'm not very well versed in everything. I just kinda picked up a little bit here and there. Uh just so I'm like well rounded. Uh so anyway, so I started playing kind of on my own going downtown, hey Jesse, going downtown um, and busking, busking on the street for money and you know, doing that kind of thing. I started working with some really great people, um, you know, before Idol and stuff to kind of write my own music just to get my feet wet. Uh, and then Idol just kind of happened, I guess. <laughs> So just for anybody who don't know, Miss Maria, you guys entered the season 13, mm -hmm. American Idol, and yeah. tell us a little bit about that now. I, well, I, 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 listen, on record, listen. Now listen, I knew you guys were going to be stars way before Miss uh, J-Lo and... <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I have it in here. Listen, I know good talent when I see it. So just want to put that on record. <laughs> I've seen you and, and, and all that good stuff before J-Lo. But you guys got uh, a chance to go to the auditions and so go from me and my sister, uh, we were actually signing up for X Factor that summer. And we got to the second round of auditions and then they cut us. And my mom's friend at the time, he was like, why don't you guys just try out for Idol? So we were just like, all right, let's, let's do Idol. We were gonna put in a video and just send it on the internet. Uh, but he was, he's such a nice guy. So he was like, no, just find where the nearest um, live audition is and I'll take you. So him, my mom, me, Zena, and Zena's best friend, uh, all of us got in the car and we took a trip to Detroit. We were just like, it was so, so sudden, very out of nowhere. We were just like, let's go. So we got in the car, got to Detroit, and we sat in the rain for 10 hours uh, just so we could sign up. <laughs> it was, I, I'm telling you, it was so crazy. Uh, but we got there, we signed up, we got our wristbands, and... Uh, we ended up coming back to to audition. So me and my sister, we had our numbers right next to each other. So she was on one side of the curtain, and I was on the other side. So I heard her audition, but I couldn't hear what the judge, what the pre judges were saying about her. Um, but I got through; she didn't, and then I had to come back again for the second round of auditions. And then we stood in the wind for seven seven or eight hours 
uh, just to get inside of the building. Then we had to wait for another five, I want to say, just to get through the second round. I, hey. had very, I don't know if it was mine. I think it's mine. But my hair is all the way up. I don't know. Oh, Lord. I'm sorry. Listen, that is okay. That happens. It happens. So what you were saying was is how you guys, you were able, you were selected. And then what happened after going through those rounds? So it was a lot of, it was a lot of auditioning until we got to the judges. But the whole thing was very time consuming. It took about three days, I want to say, before we were actually able to get to the actual judges. Um, but when we did get there, uh, they had me play my audition song and, and they, you know, all of it's out on the internet for you guys to just, watch. <laughs> I was just about to say, guys, you can go to YouTube and you can see her audition. So let's move past that. So we're, you're in, you're, you've been selected and you're right there. You end up being in the top 30. Now, this is where I was like, oh, my gosh. So you had a great audition. Your song, and because I've never been into a, a contest like that, tell us who selected the song that you sung that day. Uh, for my audition or for? Um, well, actually, uh, well, you've already been selected. You're in the top 30 now. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so my last song, I actually let my sister pick it for me. Um I didn't listen to my mom. I was just like, <laughs> eh. So, but it, in all fairness, I agreed to that song because um, for our rehearsal process, J-Lo, I, I kid you not, I quote her on this. She can come after me if she wants to. But um, she said to perform our song, our live show song, as if it was one of our own concerts. And me personally, there's a lot more to me than what they had put out on the screen because they had broadcasted me as the guitar girl, the chick with the guitar, the g girl who lost her dad that plays the guitar. That's just how they, that's how they branded me. And at the time, I didn't realize what was going on, that it was just a TV show. I, I really like got sucked into the whole, oh wow, this is this is my life. This is this is the way that, you know, they're just looking for someone to be themselves. Hey Joe. Um so really I took that, I took what she said and I really I owned it because that was another part of me. I really love performing. I mean if anybody, you know, knows me, I I love being center stage, all the attention, show choir, that's literally my whole that's my whole thing. So if I can ditch the guitar and depend on a really great band to back me up that I can like lean on and that will support me full heartedly and love what they do, I'm going to let them do their thing. Um, and that's what I, that's what I did. I, I performed. <laughs> a lot of people didn't like it, but you know, that's, I'm proud of that performance. You know, and, and and that's the reason why I wanted to find out who selected the song, what's the process, because I knew that you could sing, and I love the song. I can tell you what, uh, now, most people wouldn't have been able to recover after they came out of their shoe either. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so how, how did you really feel tell me a little bit how you felt about that because I can tell you I've been in front of people I've been booed in front of a crowd uh, trying to get on the stage I fell down in front of everybody so I know how embarrassing something like that can happen um, but as a true artist as a true performer you know that the show doesn't stop if you make a mistake and most of the times it's a mistake that you only know and most of the people don't, but that was a different situation. <laughs> and you don't have to recover. So how did you feel about that? Tell me um, when it came I mean, to the, uh, the elimination. To be honest, it, it took me a little bit by surprise, but I mean, I somewhere deep in my, deep in my guts after the, um, after the judges told me what they thought about it. I'm like, I, Compared to them, I'm a nobody. Uh, they're not gonna listen to. They're not gonna listen to what I had to say. Even if I was good and the judges thought I was terrible, 
everybody was going to be on the judge's side no matter what. So um, after after that, after the girls' night or whatever, um, I went back up to my room and I didn't have a I didn't have a partner at that time or a roommate. So to be honest, I cried. I just I balled up in a corner and I cried and I did not stop until I just came to came to grips with you know with what I you know what I put out on the stage and that's 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 what happened then uh, um but so after that I seen you again and now I was working on a project and I honestly I can't pinpoint the time frame but I do know that when I seen you again you were performing at like a brunch on a Sunday and to my surprise you were pregnant <laughs> oh yeah yeah that yep that happens yeah. <laughs> well, I was like, oh my gosh, this little girl that I remember is grown and now you're pregnant. Um, and that was literally the first time I've seen you since um, that day in the Fiat Square Mall when you performed for us. And so once you left Idol, tell us a little bit about your, your musical direction. And what, what did you say to yourself? You're going to start doing X, Y, Z. What did you learn from that experience? So um, after Idol, I didn't stop. I didn't stop. Well, legally, I had to stop for a year because they had you on contract. Um, but after they let me off my contract, I started singing again. Um, I started writing my own music. Me and my uh, boyfriend... At the time, we got married, we settled down, we had a baby, um, and I kept singing. I'm still writing. Uh, I've put out uh, in a single, I mean an EP, a single EP, <laughs> um, with five original songs on it. I did a music video. I have gone to studio, got gotten, um, gotten some more of my music put down on tracks that are definitely coming out pretty soon. Uh, had another kid <laughs> and now I'm just, now we're getting a house, obviously moved in <laughs> finally. Um, and you know, it's, it's really been just a roller coaster, but I've learned a lot from idol. I've learned that, um, that TV is, merely entertainment um and that if that is the direction i want to go later i'll know how to play the game this time um and that i'm not going to stop being myself um for anyone else i'm just gonna you know keep doing my thing and if people don't like it then then that's too bad but the people that do like it and that love me for who i am and all of my all of my craziness, they'll stick with me through the end. And um, yeah, I just, I'm a lot more mature. I'm grateful. I'm thankful for everything that I've been put through, everything that I've learned, and all of the people that have come into my life that have taught me so much about just being myself and about music and all the people that I've, like, musician-wise, that have entered my life. I've always I've always picked up something or learned something from them to widen my musical genre or to just broaden my horizons as a musician. Well, I'm so thankful that you continued because you have a gift and you know that. Um, <laughs> now, is, is, is it comfortable for you right now to perform? No, first of all, let me, before I do that, have you performed anywhere else outside of Indianapolis, Indiana, besides the Idol? Uh, yes, actually, I got picked up by this, um, by this company called BI Worldwide before, before COVID, before it got all bleh. <laughs> oh, don't talk about the COVID. Well, goodness gracious, COVID, woo. Which leads us to why we're doing this right now, you know? So, okay. So what happened now you were before COVID? Yeah. So before COVID, I got picked up uh, by BI Worldwide and they do um, events for like really big companies and stuff like out of town. So I was able to perform in Texas, Florida, um, 
and uh, where was the other one? I, it was another one. It was out of state. But um, but anyway, I got to do that for them for about a year and a half. And then I, I did get to open up for David Cook in February of 2019. Uh, in 2018, sorry. In 2018. So that was really great. So uh, I got a picture with him and uh, got to got to do that. And we shared a bottle of... Uh, uh, Hennessy. <laughs> that was great. No, not, no, 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 no. Not to these ears. I don't want to hear that. I still see you as the little girl. No. <laughs> no, but who's grown up into a very lovely young woman. So I, I'll go ahead and accept that now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Now, so you've been performing, though, here locally. Tell us oh, yeah. what have you been doing? So I've been performing literally everywhere. Um, a lot of the people that are on the thing right now, they follow me on my Instagram. So I'll post where I'm at uh, if it's a public event. Um, but I've been playing at Tin Roof, Brick House, uh, Piano Bar in Broberpool. I've been at Babies, Ale Emporium in Greenwood, Britain Tavern, literally all over the place. Um, at... Oh my goodness. There's so there's so many I can't like I can't even keep it straight in my head anymore. Look, I mean let's just say you've been all over Indianapolis. I literally been all over. Uh yesterday I was actually in Avon uh at the post Amer the American Legion post. So yep. Now during COVID you also had a few performances. Yeah. Go ahead and tell us about that. How did that get set up? Because you were actually on one of our local news stations, correct? Oh, for um, the Indianapolis uh, Arts Garden. Art and Soul. Arts and Soul. Art and Soul. Yeah. So I, it's a funny story. I was outside of the, I was outside of the place where you go and vote at Louvre Plaza. And I, I saw this band playing and I was like, wow, they're really good. Yeah. And I'm like, I wonder if I could do that. Yeah. And so um, the guy that was setting everything up, Rob Dixon, he um, he was actually running all the sound and setting everything up. And I had seen him perform at the Jazz Kitchen before, but I've never like actually been able to get a chance to talk to him. So um, so I went up, I introduced myself, I said hi and everything. And the band that was up there, they had left. Um, after I got done voting. And one of my friends was actually on stage and he was playing the piano. And I was like, hey, I know him. What's up, man? And he was like, hey, come up and sing a song. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna sing. So I sang a song uh, with him and Rob was like, you can come back. And I was like, really? And he was like, yeah. So I ended up singing outside of the voting lines, which actually got me a lot more, a lot more places, which is where I, I uh, got a lot of these other gigs. Anyway, uh, and Rob got me in on the Art and Soul um, Art and Soul gig, and I actually sang with uh, Be On It uh, for my band. They are great. Joe and Jesse, they learned a lot of my songs. Oh, my goodness. I cannot thank them enough. They learned a lot of my songs in a very short amount of time, and they killed it. So, yeah, that was great. It was very fun. And I made a lot more, a lot more connections, uh, just because I went up to somebody and introduced myself finally. So yeah, this is kind of like a, a nice thing. <laughs> a lot of people are scared to do that um, when you're. You have to network as an artist if you if you plan on being out there in the public more so. <laughs> definitely out of public. It's. It's very um, important to network and, and get yourself out there. I live by this is what my father taught me. A closed mouth doesn't get fed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, goodness. Describe your style. Um, I On a typical day, it's sweatpants and a hoodie. On a show day, it's really whatever I whatever I'm feeling. Sometimes I'll look like this. Sometimes I'll rock my afro and um, and just a little bit of eyeliner. On other days, I'm full face, 
dress, hair and makeup, the whole nine yards, um, and then some. It's kind of, it's kind of whatever I'm feeling. My my style is very all over the place. Artistic and bright. Yes, you, you know it's fun. It's very fun. <laughs> yeah. Now, when it comes to the style of music, tell me what type of person would you say Miss Sellers is? Um, as of music, as music wise goes, I am a variety artist. So I cover a lot of different genres. I, at least I try my best to. Um, and my own personal style of writing is more um, soul pop or just pop music in general because you can there's so many different sub sub genres of pop and it just kind of like fits into who i am because i can be myself and it can still be it can still be like fun cool energetic or really sad or super happy it's just there's so much that goes into it and as long as it makes people feel something i'm fine with however it sounds <laughs> Your EP, Naked. Yeah. Ooh, well, okay. The title is explosive in itself. So uh, I actually went to um, Bloomington, Indiana to record that EP with Paul Mahern um, and Jay Jones. And so uh, picking the songs, I really wanted it to say this is this is who i am and i wanted it to be naked don't worry about it let's let's pick it back up where you were saying we were talking about your ep now you said where you recorded it at and, and you were thanking the people who were working on the project talk to again us about it so i was recording with paul mahern and jay jones and when i really wanted it to be I really wanted it to be um, just a pure expression of myself. Okay. A bit of okay. every genre. So. I picked a little bit of every genre. Okay. On that, okay. On that album. Now, I'm going to say this again <laughs> now. <laughs> the signal is messing up again. So, um, uh, we, we, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get back to that. We're gonna get back to that. So let's go ahead and get into the performance. <laughs> so it must be saying, "Hey, go ahead and let this girl perform." So, so <laughs> God, I want to welcome, and I'm so honored to introduce Indianapolis' own Miss Mario Sellers. All right. So this song is called "Ours," and I just wrote it. So I hope you like it. <laughs> When I was crying Your words were too much It felt like dying But I'll never let them go I'll never really know why The words you said When we were driving in your car All those pretty chords You strum on that guitar That's all it ever is It's never who you really are and you say, baby, turn the radio up louder. We'll sit and we'll listen for hours. But I can't love you anymore. All those little things you never got to say. All those times where it just got in the way. That's all it ever is. I'll never miss them anyway Everything you ever said I was meant to hear Even if every line left me drowning in my tears It's alright, I'm okay I'll hold on to them every day And you say, baby Turn the radio up loud I 
I'll sit and I'll listen for hours Even if you don't love me anymore Thank you so much. Thank you so much. What inspired that song? Oh, <laughs> sad pop songs. <laughs> and a lot of crying in the shower. Okay. All right. <laughs> Can I get another one out of you real quick? Another one? Okay. <laughs> uh, so this is... Uh, the third album, I mean, third song on my Naked EP, and it's called Naked. Um, so, yeah, kind of the same inspiration, but just a little more lovey-dovey. So, yeah. I actually love those naked guys. Make sure that you, when we get this information out there, make sure you go look up Naked, because I love it. It sounds, and we're going to talk about it in a second, but... Uh, <laughs> Go ahead, okay. Miss Mario Sellers, with her EP titled song, Naked. In the mountain, baby, when I see you, honey, waking up is the best part. I don't know, lady, you kind of drive me crazy. You're my favorite work of art. You know that I love you. I put no one else above you. <laughs> Telling me it's all right. Then see the light in my eyes. Tell me that you love me naked I give you my truth, you give me all of you Baby, I won't waste it Tell me that you love me, babe huh. Said, honey, I'm grateful, I'll keep it simple I love you, there's no turning back Got no makeup, yeah Just your t-shirt on And I can lay with you all day Hey, yeah, yeah. Feeling beautiful now When you look at me Said I love to feel this way You know that I love you I put no one else above you You Telling me it's alright Then see the life in my I was getting ready to tear up because I still see I think you see the young girl that I seen on stage. And when I see talent like yours, it's just so overwhelming, inspirational. Because I've always wanted nothing but good things for you. And the fact that I know that you're still going after whatever has happened to you. I'm just so thankful to even be in your presence. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh. 
I get like that when the spirit gets to moving and I just love, I love you. you. I just love your talent. Oh, oh, oh I love you too. <laughs> oh my goodness. Introduce me there. <laughs> oh, goodness. Come here, little one. All right. So <laughs> this is Marcellus. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm, I'm, I'm 24 years old. Guy. You how many? You three years old? Yes. Yeah. Woo. You love hearing your mommy sing? Yeah. And uh -huh. my daddy's gone in. He's at work. Okay. All right. <laughs> Go upstairs with your nana. Oh. oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Let everyone know. Take it upstairs. Let everyone know how they can read you, book you, listen to your EP. Tell everyone. So uh, I'll definitely drop my information in the comments, but um, you can type in Marielle Sellers on on Instagram, on not Instagram, on Spotify, on Facebook, on Apple Music, and I am the only one. I promise. <laughs> um, and that's really that's really it. I I haven't changed much of my uh, much of my social media stuff because my name is so long and complicated. Like everything, so I just kept it you know long and complicated. Well, just for those who don't have social media and they might be listening to this particular episode via audio, go ahead and let them know. Spell your name mm -hmm. and go from there. So on Spotify, it's Marielle Sellers, M-A-R-R-I-A-L-L-E-S-E-L-L-A-R-S. And on Instagram, it's the Marielle, T-H-E-E. M A R R I A L L E. And that is me. Awesome. Thank you so much for blessing the candy show with your talent tonight. Um, hopefully soon I can get out there and see you again. I, I just love the the whole vibe of your artistry. It's and I think you have a song, is it called Coffee or something like that? Yeah, so I love the whole entire vibe on that, and um, you know, when 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 it's safe enough, I'll be out there because I see you already getting out there. You're doing your thing, and I just can't wait to get out there and see you again in person. So I'm gonna give you a virtual hug. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much again for attending another episode of The Candy Show. No, thank and you for having me. This was fun. I had a great time. And you have a great show, a great platform. So thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Have a good day. Have a good night. Have a good evening, wherever you're watching it. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.